Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you, yes you, make your game dev dreams become a reality. Today's part 17 of the AI series where we're going to implement a better nav mesh link traversal. What we did in AI series part 2 was implement nav mesh links and make it so the nav mesh agent could traverse a link with one of four methods. It was teleport, parabola, curve, in normal speed. We got that script directly from Unity's NavMesh components repo and that's classified as a sample script, meaning it's not really production ready. And that becomes evident whenever we start looking into the details of this script, where there's a bunch of hard-coded values that means that it's not really configuration driven and everything will only work one way ever, which is generally a bad design because you want to be able to modify all these values in the inspector. What we're going to do in this video is create a small sample scene with nine platforms Two of them will be connected with a section of floor that is not included in the nav mesh. That's being put in so we can simulate something like the additively loaded scene like we did in the last video, where it appears to the user that there's a seamless floor. In those cases, we'll configure the nav mesh link to say move at a normal speed, but on ones where there's actually a gap in the floor, we'll configure it to be maybe a curve or a parabola so the agent will jump. The other enhancement we're going to make is make the agent choose if they actually want to take that nav mesh link. In Llama Survival, I ran across this issue where my zombies would hop back and forth over some nav mesh links because they'd be at the start point of a nav mesh link and the way that this script works is it just makes you take the nav mesh link. A lot of times it doesn't help you get to where you're trying to go. And before we go any further, I just want to give a huge shout out to everyone who's supporting me on Patreon right now. I really appreciate it. Every bit helps the channel grow, reach more people, add value to more people, and that means that more people are making their game development dream become a reality. If you want to help me in that cause, you can show your support on Patreon, patreon.com slash llamacademy. You can get your name up on the screen, you can get a voice shout out, and some other cool perks. In this tutorial, we're going to make a new scene. I'll call it nav mesh link testing, and I'm going to copy paste the main camera, the directional light, and the player from the sample scene, which is the primary scene we did on AI series part one through 10. In the scene, I'm gonna create a grid of nine eight by eight ProBuilder cubes that will be our floor that our nav mesh agent will jump between. I'll also use the ProBuilder Vertex colors to color them this black-ish color. Between the floor sections on the right of the player, I'm going to put in a ProBuilder cube that's a blue color that I'm going to call a fake floor. I'm doing this because sometimes you want your nav mesh agent to cross a nav mesh link without doing a hop. Like for example, if you've connected two scenes additively, like we did in the last video, and there's actually no jump to go from one nav mesh to the other, and you want your nav mesh agent to more seamlessly go from one to the next nav mesh. But then we have some cases where we do want the nav mesh agent to hop over a hole, which is going to be the rest of the level. I'll then create a nav mesh link that spans the whole width of these floor sections. So that's a width of eight, and I'll have the start point be negative one Z and the end point be positive one Z. I'll select the world geometry and attach a nav mesh surface. That's the agent type of player. I'll collect objects children and leave everything else the same. If I bake that, we see that there is a hole between all of the floor sections, even though we have those two fake floors. I'm going to just duplicate this nav mesh link and rotate it so they go over all the holes and over the fake floors. And over the fake floors, I'm going to change the area type to be walkable, and all the other ones will be area type jump. I've also set the cost modifier on all of these to be one. Now that we have all these nav mesh links set up, let's click play. And we'll see that my agent, as before, jumps over all of these links, including the ones with the fake floor. So that's not really the experience we want, right? To the player, there should be a seamless transition from just walking over these cubes. And on the ones where there's actually a hole, they should jump. That would make a more realistic experience. We'll open up the agent link mover, and there's a few things we're gonna do. The first thing is at the very bottom, we're gonna go and create a public class link traversal configuration, and we're gonna call that serializable. That way we can change it in the inspector. In here, I'm going to put a public off mesh link move method, move method, and a public int area type. So this is going to map our area type to our move methods. That way, whenever we say that a particular nav mesh link is a jump area, then we can attach that to a curve or a 
parabola off mesh link move method. And whenever it's something like a walkable surface, then we'll just keep them at the off mesh link move method of normal speed. And since now I'm actually taking a look at this code and changing it, uh, I'm gonna rename some of these things like these coroutines that are called curve and parabola and normal speed. I'm gonna change them all to be renamed to be move curve, move parabola, and move normal speed. If I scroll up more to the very top, I'm going to add a public list link traversal configuration and call that nav mesh link traversal types. And I'll set that by default to be a new list. Up here too, I, I don't really like this M underscore naming convention that Unity uses. So I'm going to change the M underscore curve to be just called curve and the M underscore method to be just method. Then let's take a look at the start curve routine. In here, if the agent is on the nav mesh link, I'm gonna do an off mesh link data, off mesh link data equals agent dot current off mesh link data. Now, if you're like me and you've checked out the off mesh link data struct before, you see that there's this property off mesh link you might think since nav mesh link and off mesh link are relatively interchangeable, at least that's how I use them, that you can just access off mesh link data dot off mesh link. But this is actually null when the agent is on a nav mesh link because they're not exactly the same in the nav mesh structure. So to figure out what the actual link is that we're on, we need to use agent dot nav mesh owner and cast that to nav mesh link. This is actually the recommended solution from Unity on the nav mesh components GitHub repo. Once we have a reference to the nav mesh link the agent is currently on, we can get the area from that by doing link.area. So I'll do int area type equals link.area. The first enhancement to the functionality here that I want to do is make it so the agent will consider if they should actually take this off mesh link or this nav mesh link. In Llama Survival, I had an issue where my zombies would, once they would hit the start position of a nav mesh link, they would automatically take it because that's what this code does. That nav mesh link wasn't actually taking them closer to the player and they weren't actually trying to take that nav mesh link. So there's something that happens inside the nav mesh system where as soon as they hit the start point or become close enough to the start point of a nav mesh link, they're marked as is on nav mesh link. And that's not ideal. So to address that issue, what we're going to do is check if the off mesh link data end position is closer to the agent's destination than the start position. So and we'll do that by vector three dot distance off mesh link data dot end position agent dot destination is less than vector three dot distance off mesh link data dot start position. And the second argument again is agent dot destination. So only if if this nav mesh link is actually in service of getting closer to the destination, will we try to do anything? Now that we know that we actually want to take this nav mesh link, let's see which configuration we want to use. So I'll do link traversal configuration, configuration equals nav mesh link traversal types dot find. And I'm going to use a delegate here. We'll change it later. Type arrow function type dot area type equals area type. So that'll tell us that we will either get a configuration that matches this particular area type or we'll get null back. Since we're specifying per nav mesh area which move method we're going to use, we can't just have on link event happen. We need to specify that a link event happened with a particular move method. That way we can also have the animator update correctly based on which move method we're doing. Because again for normal speed we want them to walk but for a jumping one we want them to jump. So if you also have a ladder for example you could play the climb animation while your player moves up the ladder. Which actually brings me to this move method method that we defined at the beginning that used to be called m underscore move method, something like that. We're going to rename that again to default move method. So when there's not a specific nav mesh link traversal type defined for a given area, we're going to define the default to be this. This would only get called in the case where you either don't specify a discrete configuration per nav mesh area type, or maybe you added new area types and forgot to update your nav mesh agents. So we're going to modify this if condition because right now it's just if the default method is that, but we actually want to consider if the configuration is not null and the configuration move method is normal speed, then we want to do the normal speed movement, right? But the other case is if the configuration is null and the default move method is normal speed, then we still want to do the normal movement. So that's configuration not equal to null and configuration dot move method equals off mesh link move method normal speed in parentheses or again in parentheses configuration equals null and the default move method is the normal speed. We're going to do that same condition basically on all of these if conditions for each off mesh link move method. So if that's true, if we do want to move at normal speed, 
we're going to invoke the onlink start with the normal speed move method. Then we'll yield return start coroutine move at normal speed. That's what we already were doing. And then whenever that's done, we're going to invoke the onlink end again with normal speed. We're going to do that exact same pattern for each move method. So we come down here a little bit. We'll do else if configuration is not equal to null and the configuration move method is equal to parabola or the configuration is null and the default move method is parabola. Again, the exact same thing on link start invoke with the parabola move method. We'll yield return start coroutine move parabola agent. And in here, they're passing in some kind of default variables. So that's not really a good design because you want to be able to specify that in the inspector what these numbers are. So if we take a look at that, move parabola takes the agent, the height, and the duration. So the duration being 0 0.5, if it's a really long jump or something, they are going to look kind of weird, right? So so to make sure that the duration matches how fast the agent moves, what we're going to do is pass in for the duration vector 3 dot distance off mesh link data start position off mesh link data end position. So that's how far the entire jump is and divide that by the agent speed. That'll give us the duration it would take to traverse that if the agent was just going to walk over it. If you want them to jump slower or faster, you can add a multiplier or something to this, but I'm just setting it up so they go normal speed over everything. And for the second argument, they put two, they call that the height. So I'm going to create a class member variable called parabola height and I'll set that to two by default. But you know, actually, if we look at move parabola, they inside this while loop put height times four. So I'll set the parabola height to be eight and remove this extra four multiplier that's kind of hidden in here. And then we'll head back to our primary loop and continue our replacement of these if conditions to do the same one. I'm not going to repeat it again for the curve. And in here we will again invoke onlink start and onlink end with the curve move method. The move curve coroutine again passes the 0.5 time. So we're gonna do the same vector three distance off mesh link data dot start position, off mesh link data end position, divide by agent speed to get the appropriate amount of time it should actually take. And there's only one more condition here. So we'll do again, else if configuration not null move method is teleport and teleport's actually pretty easy. We'll just invoke both callbacks on link start on link end with the teleport move method. It's important that you do call agent.complete off mesh link if the agent is on the off mesh link. If you don't do that, then the agent kind of gets stuck because they're expecting that the off mesh link or the nav mesh link is going to handle some kind of movement. And so the actual navigation system stops working for them until you call complete off mesh links. Now we have, I think, a, a lot better agent link mover where we can update our animators based on these off mesh link move method that we used. And that's actually the next thing that we need to do. Because remember, when we hooked up animations, which I think was AI series part three, maybe on this nav mesh link on link start on link end we made the agent jump always but now we can move at normal speed which means we would just have them walk so if we open up the player movement we'll see that it's mad about handling start and handling end because we didn't pass in the off mesh link move method parameter so we'll add that to both of these two handle link start handle link end and if we think about it a little bit if the move method is normal speed we want to set the animator bool to be is walking in the case that the move method is not teleport. So any other case besides normal speed and teleport, we want them to jump. So that's the curve in the parabola, right? And then if we look at the handle link end, since we're only setting the trigger to be landed and the update function actually handles the walking at this point, we'll just check that the move method is not teleport and is not normal speed. And then we'll set the trigger of landed. Then we need to go to the update because we don't want to be setting this Boolean of is walking if the agent's on a nav mesh link. So we'll do, if the agent is not on an off mesh link, then we will set this Boolean. So if they're doing that, then we want the link to handle the animator, not this update function. If we then take a look at enemy movement, their handling start and handle link end are the exact same. So I'm actually gonna copy paste what we did in player movement into here. And then if we take a look at update, we have the same thing happening here. So we'll check if the agent is not on an off mesh link, then we'll set the animator Boolean is walking to be if the agent velocity magnitude is greater than 0.01. If we hop back to the Unity editor, I'll set the default curve to be kind of aggressive so we can tell the difference between that and the parabola. I'll make it where you pretty quickly get to max height and then you stay there for a little bit and then you come back down. I'll then set up two nav mesh link traversal types. The first one we'll set up to be the normal speed movement. 
If we open up the navigation panel and click on the areas, we can see that zero is walkable, one is not walkable, and two is jump. So as many as you define here, there'll be zero through 31. That's a lot of types. If you wanted to make a custom inspector, you could do that so that way you get the drop down kind of like the nav mesh link has. We'll see when I click on another platform, my Unity Chan model does this jump, and when she walks over these blue fake floors, she walks across it and it looks pretty close to the same as if she was walking on the actual nav mesh. We can of course change these at runtime to use the parabola for example for the jump and it does not impact walking over the fake floor. And you know what, just for fun, let's add an enemy in here. Let's create a new empty game object, call it enemy spawner, attach the enemy spawner script to it. We'll hook up the player and the number of enemies to spawn will just that one. We'll drag the basic enemy to be the configuration, that way we have the just basic enemy that'll chase me. We'll select the world geometry, add a new nav mesh surface, set up enemy type one, bake that. And all these nav mesh links, we need to add a second one for where we configure the agent type to be enemy one. So I'll select all of those and just copy paste the nav mesh link that we have for the player and change the enemy type. We'll also set up the enemy to have their agent link mover configuration to be the same as the player. And then if we click play, I'll change my damage to be zero so I don't immediately kill this enemy. And as I run around, we'll see that the enemy follows me, does all of the jumps like I'm jumping, and over the fake floors that are not included in the nav mesh, she traverses at normal speed just like we expected. I hope you got a lot of value out of today's video and you understand how to better configure your mesh agents to traverse the nav mesh links. If you have a use case that's not covered by what we've looked at today, please leave me a comment down below. I'd really like to hear about that because this worked really well for me in Llama Survival and I'd like to address any additional issues that maybe you have that weren't covered in this video. If you have been getting value out of this video or this series, please consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. There are new videos posted every Tuesday, sometimes on other days too. If you have any questions, if you have a suggestion for a topic, or if you're implementing AI into your game, drop a comment down below and I'll see you on the next video.